Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Our lecture today is about tooth discoloration and bleaching. Classification of discoloration. Number one, patient-related causes. A. Pulp necrosis. B. Intrapulpal hemorrhage. C. Dentine hypersensitivity. D. Age. Number two, tooth related defects. A. Developmental defects. Enamel hypocalcification. Enamel hypoblation. B. Systemic conditions. Erythroblastosis fetalis. High fever. Thalassemia and sickle cell anemia. Amylogenesis imperfecta. Dentinogenesis imperfecta. Number three, drug related defects. A. Tetracycline. B. Edemic fluorosis. Number four, dentist related causes. A. Endodontically related. Pulp tissue remnants. Intracanal medications, obturation materials, B. Restoration related, amalgam, pins and posts, composites. Patient related causes, A. Pulp necrosis, any irritation to the pulp may result in pulp necrosis and release of disintegration by protects. These may penetrate the dentinal tubules and discolor the surrounding dentine. The degree of discoloration depends on how long the tooth was necrotic. Treatment is by intracanal bleaching. B. Intrapulpal hemorrhage. When a tooth is subjected to a trauma, hemorrhage occurs in the pulp. Erythrocyte undergo lysis to a vertex as iron sulfide enter the dentinal tubules and discolor the dentine. This discoloration is difficult to bleach and may be reversible. A treatment is by intracanal bleaching. C. Dentine hypercalcification. Due to trauma, the pulp may form dentine rapidly to decrease the volume of the pulp. Such a new dentine increases the yellow appearance of the tooth. Treatment starts with extra coronal bleaching, and if not beneficial, more aggressive treatment is needed, as a root canal therapy and intracoronal bleaching, or a crown the tooth. T. Age. In the old age teeth, certain problems occur to the tooth as a physiological dentine opposition thinning and cracking of enamel and incisor wear of the tooth. These problems increase the color of the tooth which can be treated by bleaching. Tooth related defects. A. Developmental defects. Enamel hypocalcification. The enamel surface is intact with distinct white to brown areas on the facial surface of the tooth. Enamel hypoplasia. The enamel surface is defective and porous. It may be hereditary as amylogenesis imperfecta or due infection, tumors, or trauma. During enamel formation, proper mineralization of the tooth is affected. Treatment can start by bleaching and later conservative treatment to repair the porous surface. B. Systemic conditions. Erythroblastosis fetalis. It happened due to RH incompatibility of the blood in newborn babies. Large amount of hemosiderine pigments are released and discolor the dentine. Stain is usually green, brown, or blue. Other condition is a sickle cell anemia. It is an inherited blood dyscrasia 
The disc elevation is similar to erythroblastosis vitalis, but more severe. Other condition is amelogenesis imperfecta. It causes yellow to brown disc elevation. Dentinogenesis imperfecta, it causes brown, yellow, or gray disc elevation, which should be treated by restorative procedures as composite buildup or clowns. Drug-related defects. There are certain drugs that, when ingested, the tooth color during it is formation, a tetracycline. In the 1960s, the tetracycline was used to treat chronic obstructive diseases. It was discovered to discolor the teeth in children. Color change ranks from light yellow to more darker gray to brown, depending on the dosage, duration of intake, and age of the patient at the time of administration of the drug. Tetracycline bends to calcium and gets incorporated to hydroxyapatite crystal of enamel and dentine. The treatment may be bleaching extracoronally or intracoronally after intentional root canal therapy. B. Epidemic fluorosis. Intake of large amount of fluoride during tooth formation may produce defect in enamel matrix, causes hypoplasia. It is seen as white spots ranking from chalky white to brown discoloration. A treatment is done by extracoronal bleaching with a restorative therapy of the polar surface. C. Chlorhexidine. This is a surface stain after the wrong use of a chlorhexidine mouthwash. It ranks from yellow to brown color. Dentist related causes. Endodontically related, pulp tissue remnants. If some pulp tissue remains in the pulp chamber, especially the pulp bone, discoloration occurs due to tissue and the blood decomposition. Intracanal medicaments, phenolic or iodoform based medicaments, may discolor dentin. Obturating material. After obturation, sealer and cataracta have to be removed or from the bulb chamber to prevent tooth discoloration. C. Restoration related. Amalgam, silver alloy with a taste tarnish may discolor the tooth structure, which is difficult to treat. Other things is pins and posts. Metal pins and posts may show through the composite restoration. Now, composite. A micro leakage around the composite fillings may discolor the tooth due to entrance of bacteria and fluid through the gap between the tooth and filling. Treatment is by replacing the filling. Bleaching materials. The main bleaching materials used now are hydrogen peroxide, it is also called superoxol. 32 35% is the most common bleaching agent. It has a strong bleaching action, but it acoustic and burn the tissue in contact. Other, sodium perchlorate. It is the material that when it dry is stable, but in the presence of water, it decomposes to form sodium metaporate, hydrogen peroxide, and oxygen. It is a safe and easy controlled so it is used in intracoronal bleaching. Now, carbamide peroxide. It is also called urea hydrogen peroxide, a percentage from 3 to 45%. It is a mostly used in 10%. And when it breaks down, it forms about 3.5% hydrogen peroxide and many byproducts as urea ammonia, carbon dioxide. Mechanism of bleaching action. Bleaching agent 
act on the organic structure of dental heart tissue, slowly degradating them to bioprotects as carbon dioxide. Inorganic molecules do not react with the bleaching agents. This reaction is called oxidation reduction reaction or redox reaction, whereby unstable peroxides convert to unstable free radicals, which oxides or reduce other molecules. Bleaching techniques for endodontically treated teeth. Thermocatalytic technique. First of all, we do isolation the tooth with rubber dam. Then we place the bleaching agent, hydrogen peroxide or sodium peroxide or both, in the tooth chamber. Heat the agent with heat by heat source, either hot sticks or light source. Repeats until bleaching give satisfactory results. Wash the pulp chamber with the water and seal the tooth with a cotton pallet and temporary material. After two to three weeks, we call the patient to analyze the bleaching results. Then, when we reach to final result, I place a suitable filling material to seal permanently the tooth. Intracoronal walking bleaching technique. Take a radiograph to ensure good endodontic obturation. Isolate the tooth with a rubber dam. Prepare an excess opening and cleaning the pulp chamber from any cataperca or filling material. Place a paria as a glass enamel cement of 2 mm thickness uh, on the coronal orifice to protect the dentinal tubules from penetration of the bleaching agent. Place the freshly mixed sodium perchlorate water mix in the pulp chamber. Place a temporary filling to seal the excess opening. We call the patient after one to two weeks and repeat the treatments when needed. After completion of the bleaching, close the excess opening with a composite material. When discoloration is internal and external combination treatment it can be done by a intracoronal bleaching and in office bleaching, placing hydrogen peroxide on the facial surface and placing a heat source. B intracoronal bleaching and home bleaching using a night guard template and hydrogen peroxide gel. Effect of a bleaching agent on the tooth and surrounding structure. Number one, tooth sensitivity. This is mostly seen with in office bleaching, hydrogen peroxide with heat. This may be due to penetration of the bleaching agent to the enamel and dentine and tension with the restorations. Number two, effect on enamel. Bleaching agent degrees enamel hardness, but the fluoride application restores remineralization of enamel. Number three, effect on the pulp. When the bleaching agent penetrates the enamel and dentine, it will cause transient reduction in the pulpal blood flow. Number four, cervical resorption. When using hydrogen peroxide of more than 30% concentration, external cervical resorption may occur. Five, effect on composite. After bleaching, composite filling may be affected by surface roughening of the restoration. Tensile strength is decreases and microlocage is more possible to occur. Thank you for your nice listening.